Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nays and for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. As the title says above, this is going to be part two to my August book haul. This book haul is going to focus mainly on my Christian books, my Christian fiction, biblical fiction books, because my Christian nonfiction was super long. So we're going to now move on to this. Now, the first three books I have read, I don't remember if I hauled these because I think I didn't get these book in, books until August and I had to read them in August so I can't really remember so if I did haul these already I apologize but if not I'm hauling them now. So the first book is a Christian fantasy and that is going to be Dawn Singer by Jonalyn Boygett and um oh love this book so much. Watch my wrap up um my September reads and studies to see the wrap up on this but I enjoy this book a lot. I still honestly don't know if they were fairies or not or just humans. However, I loved it. Um, I loved the whole idea of um, the realm of like heaven, the space. They call it the space in between or something like that. But um, it was amazing. And then who is this? I'm sorry. The way that this book is, is like really weird. But um, you have the well of light, the gate of life. Um, and then there is this character it's emmerich um emmerich reminds me of jesus um and then you have the loaf yule which would be god so overall great book just watch my my september reads and studies to know what i mean the next book is going to be wayfarer and um i don't have a physical copy of that they actually sent me an ebook so the cover is here but it's part two to dawn singer and i i need to read it like asap because the ending of dawn singer help me so yeah the next book i have is the legendary wolf by amar habib i have read this i talked about it in my september reads and studies because i did my little um july and august wrap up in that video this book was really good i'm not sure if it's really like a christian book or not it is thriller based it talks about an assassin and his mindset um but there is mention of god and hope and things like that so that's why i'm sharing it it was a great read i enjoyed it a lot so i gave it five stars okay so the next two books are gonna be from shadow mountain right yes i'm just gonna say shadow mountain um and i have a contemporary romance here and then i have a biblical fiction for you guys so the contemporary romance is called glass slippers ever after in me it's a reimagining of cinderella it's clean romance and i do own some other books from the author her name is julie wright um which are kind of like reimaginings of other fairy tales and um classic novels which were really good romances so i just figured i would share this with you guys and this cover is gorgeous as well to me like I said, the next book from Shadow Mountain is going to be biblical fiction. It's called The Last Man at the Inn by R. William Bennett. It's one man's quest to believe, and here is what that looks like. And I thought this was so awesome, which is why I requested it. I'm shocked at how tiny this book is, though. It's really, really tiny. It's only 195 pages, so 200 pages. I could read this in a day or two. But um, I'm going to read the back of this one for sure. So, it says, It's a fictional account of Simon, a contemporary of Jesus, who was the last man to get a room at the inn in Bethlehem, which meant Joseph and Mary were turned away when they sought shelter. When they sought shelter, that night, unable to sleep, Simon witnesses the gathering of the nativity and wonders if the newborn child might be the promised Messiah he had heard rumors about in town. Simon begins a journey of faith and reflection at his life. I'm sorry, as his life intersects with Jesus during the major milestones of his life and ministry. So, yeah, I'm actually excited to get into this. It says that Simon visits many of the cities where Jesus ministered. He witnesses the Sermon on the Mount. He hears of the parables and testimonies and observes some of the miracles all from a distance. His journey takes him through an intellectual his journey takes him through intellectual curiosity, disbelief, humility, sincere investigation, moments of inspiration with the typical setbacks and victories of that process until he finally turns himself completely over to Christ. This story celebrates the birth of baby Jesus and ends with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, making this an ideal book for both Christmas and Easter holidays. Its cultural and historical accuracy of the story has been reviewed by experts in Roman period Palestine and Jewish culture so i'm all for it honestly i'm all for it so i'm excited to read this book really really soon hopefully i can get to it this month but probably probably not probably not but i have to review this for october so if not this month then october for sure but i'm excited to dive into this okay then i got one book from bethany for the month of august and um honestly i'm gonna tell you now the only reason why i requested this book is because of the cover and the title name 
that is it. Honestly, there was nothing else that, like, I cared for. When I saw the cover, saw the title name, I just immediately requested it. After the fact, I read the synopsis, but yeah. So it's called The Spice King. Um, it's book one in Hope and Glory. It's by Elizabeth Camden. I have never read anything from her. This is historical fiction. I'm finding that I kind of am enjoying historical fiction a lot more, depending on the type of historical fiction. Um, but yeah. I don't, I don't honestly even want to read the back of it, it's, but I'm going to read it. Um, so it says, Gray Delacourt has dedicated his life to building an acclaimed global spice empire, but it has come to a cost. It has come at a cost. Resolved to salvage his family before they spiral out of control, he returns to his ancestral home for good, year, for good after years of traveling the world. Um, as a junior botanist for the Smithsonian, Annabelle Larkin has been charged with the impossible task of gaining access to the notoriously private Delacroix, I think it's Delacroix, I don't know, Delacroix um, plant collection. If she fails, she will be out of a job and the family farm in Kansas will go under. She has no idea that in gaining entrance to the Delacroix world, she will be unwilling, unwittingly stepping into a web of dangerous political intrigue far beyond her experience. Unable to deny her attraction to the reclusive business tycoon, Annabelle will be forced to choose between her heart and loyalty to her country. Can Gray and Annabelle find a way through the storm of scandal without destroying the family? Gray is waiting. I'm sorry. that Without destroying the family, Gray is fighting to save. So, I don't really care what the synopsis is. Honestly, it's just the cover and the book title just got my attention. That's why I requested it. The next four books are from Buoyancy Publishing publishers yes they contacted me on um instagram and told me about these books and i was all for it so i'm currently reading one of the books and that book is in the shadow of the king by melissa rosenberger this is book one in the unveiled series and oh my god you guys i've read chapter one and i paused i started chapter one last night and i stopped because i i had to do a reading vlog on this book because it was like blowing my mind basically um in mark chapter 6 verse 33 and i believe in matthews i can't remember where they talk about how jesus had sisters we know that he had sisters but they never mentioned their names well this woman here miss melissa rosenberger basically created a story about what his sisters would have been like so in this book he has hannah who would be the second oldest child jesus would be the first and she would be the second oldest and just from chapter one alone it guts me because we know that his brothers didn't believe of him as being the christ until after um his resurrection Sorry if you guys hear, heard the door. Mel is here probably. But um, that was like insane. So this book really just dives into her life and what she would have felt and how she would have felt about her brother being the savior. Um, but chapter one just guts me. It guts me. You guys see the tabs. So reading blog expected. The next three books are by Linda Ferguson and they're a part of the Lion and the Butterfly series. Um, so the first book is called A Royal Dance, the second book is called A Royal Family, and the third book is called A Royal Father. So there are three of the books um, and all that I'm going to tell you guys is it follows a girl named Jerusha around the time of um, Jesus if I'm not mistaken because it talks about Yeshua and the Messiah um, and there's something that happens she has like a dark secret and something happens and then there's this religious leader who kind of like i guess lies on her i'm not sure if it has to do with the lie or if it has to do with rape but something happens and it's a secret that's kept from the world and then it's told but it's not told in the truth because you know people prefer the religious leader over a little girl so yeah i'm gonna read the back real quick um it says jerusha's father dotes on her and calls her royalty a lioness who will one day dance before his king she adores her father but she cannot tell him her darkest secret instead of dancing like other jewish girls jerusha sits alone plagued by guilt for a crime she did not commit who will believe her story against the word of the most respected religious leader in jerusalem jerusha's fears are amplified when her Jewish mother, who is deceived by the high priest, forces Jerusha to leave her father's protection and live as a lowly servant in Herod's palace. While the esteemed son of the high priest still wants to marry her, sorry, will the esteemed son of the high priest still want to marry her or will Timon, her father's handsome apprentice, win her heart? Caught between the orthodox beliefs of her beautiful Jewish mother and her father's newfound faith in the Messiah, Yeshua, Jerusha is plummeted into a soul-wrenching family tragedy that leaves her with more questions than answers. Take an unforgettable journey in this first book of the Lion and the Butterfly series. Walk the dusty streets of first century Jerusalem and discover the chrysalis of hope 
for a new beginning through faith in Yahshua. So, I don't know if it has to do with rape or some type of, I, I don't I don't know. I'm hoping it's not rape. It would gut me. But um, something goes on. There's a love triangle and some drama that takes place in um, first century Jerusalem, which sounds crazy to me. But um, we have this series, which I'm excited to read. And this will follow with um, reading blogs for all three of these books. I'm actually going to be binge, binge reading. <laughs> well, I'm going to binge read the series, obviously. But I'm going to be buddy reading this book with my sister Stephanie. You can check out her channel by clicking the eye on the screen. We're going to read this soon. Hopefully this month, we're going to we're gonna um, dive in. Yes. Okay, and the last four books that I have for you guys are all from Rebel. And um, I'm a part of their blogging team. They have changed up their program a bit, um, which I think is quite interesting. So last month, they sent out for, uh, an email with four different books that you could sign up for. And I signed up. Literally was praying that I would get into the review program for all of them, and I did. So I do have all four books here, and I'm currently reading the first one, which is You Belong With Me by Terrace Ferris. Terry Ferris, sorry. It's book one in the Restoring Heritage. Um, I'm almost done. I'm like two-thirds of the way through. I'm probably going to finish this today because, like, oh, so good. But um, I'm, I'm not going to dive into the whole ordeal for this book because it's it's a lot. It changes perspectives. It follows different people, different relationships. But what I love is the use of God and how they incorporate faith in this book. It is contemporary romance and it's so good and it deals with a guy who was an orphan and him dealing with the loss of his mother and his finding out his real identity and um, learning that just because you were orphaned, you're not lost. You do have a father up above who is God and um, learning that you have a true identity and getting used to that identity. And um, there are a lot of people in here with a lot of issues um, and it's just amazing to see them come to faith and really begin to experience God for themselves. So I really am enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would. Um, the romance is superb, superb. Um, and uh, yeah. The next book is also contemporary romance and it's The Words Between Us by Aaron Bartels. And um, it says a story to savor and share. I loved every sentence, every word. Um, and it... All I know is that it deals with a woman named Robin Windsor. There's a guy named Peter Flint and something about classical novels. It's a book with romance about books. That's all I that that thought that's all I need. I'm not sure if it incorporates God in here anywhere. Um it probably does because it's from Bethany and um it's not Bethany, it's from Rebel and um it's basically Christian fiction. But um I'm interested to see how this goes because I was really like blown away by how much I was enjoying this book um to the point where I actually had to start tabbing and um yeah so I'm excited to dive into this one as well the next book um is called The Griffin Heist by James R. Hannibal Hannibal I don't know why I say Hannibal Hannibal and um this is a suspense novel that's Christian fiction based but it deals with the CIA and uh yeah it just sounds crazy so um, quickly reading the back, it says, Talia Enger is a rookie CIA case officer assigned not to the Moscow desk as she had hoped, but to the forgotten backwaters of Eastern Europe, a department only known as Other. When she is tasked with helping a young, charming Moldovian executive secure his design for revolution revolutionary defense technology, she figures she'll be back in D.C. within a few days, but that's before she knows where the designs are stored and who's after them. Um, with her shady civilian partner, Adam Taylor... Tyler? Adam Tyler. Talia takes a deep dive into a world where criminal minds and unlikely strategies compete for access to the Griffin, a high-altitude data vault that hovers in the meosphere, mesosphere, um, but is Tyler actually helping her or is he using her for his own dark purposes? First of all, CIA, criminal minds, I'm all for it. I told you guys I'm trying to get more into the suspense because a lot of you guys have asked me um, if I have read any Christian suspense novels and I haven't, but I do plan to start diving into those, not this month, but next month because I have to. Actually, I'm actually going to be reading this book this month because I have to for review um, by the end of the month. So I'm getting into this and the next book I'm going to show you guys, but um, I definitely am building up my suspense collection, um, my suspense library, if you will. I don't want to say collection because I read all my books, but um I'm building up my suspense library and I'm looking for books that deal with the CIA and stuff like that because I love watching shows and movies like that so can't wait to get into this. The last book I got is by Ted Decker and Rochelle Decker and I have a lot of Ted Decker books like literally. It, 
if you guys see my ebook collection, I have well over 10,000 ebooks because I just like downloading ebooks. I like buying ebooks. Ebooks just make me happy because I can carry all 10,000 on one little device. You know, but um, this one is the newest one. I don't know if this has been released or if it's coming out. It'll be on the screen. Yeah, but um, it's the girl behind the red rope by Ted Decker and Michelle Decker, and this is Christian fiction, of course. Um, but this one is a little weird. Um, it has to do with like a secret religious cult. I'm gonna say a cult, but um, they don't call it. A, they call it a community. Um, but yeah, it deals with a, a secret religious community, and a girl named Grace who questions everything that. Um, she built her life on and enemies and uncovering the truth and yep yep that's what it's about and I know my sis Steph was talking about this book in her um, I think it was her anticipated releases for the fall if not mistaken I'll you can click the on the screen to get to that video but she talked about it and um, yeah it sounds interesting like I said I requested this really wasn't thinking much about reading the synopsis I knew that it was Ted Decker so I requested it <laughs> and got into the blog tour so a little insane how that works but it worked out so I have to read this for the end of the month as well which I'm excited to read because I haven't read many Ted Decker books I actually haven't read any of them I have about five on my bookshelf and several on my e-readers so I'm excited to dive into this hopefully I like it fingers crossed but again I also have this one set and ready to go because I need to read all these books for the month but that is it for this haul Sorry that I have been tripping over my words in the last few videos. It's just that I haven't actually recorded a video in real time in a long time. And I'm still trying to work out this new schedule with my son being back officially in school. So bear with me. Um, this video probably was all over the place. Thank God for editing because we can edit things out. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching this video subscribe if you aren't subscribed and if you are subscribed click the little bell to stay notified comment if you have anything you want me to answer any questions or anything like that and um i'll see you guys in the next video bye